When I first arrived in Middlesbrough, you played a major part, didn't you? I mean, money was tight at that time. Yeah, money was very tight. Uh, Willie Madden was the manager, uh, as you know. And uh, Willie uh, had responded to, to the letter that you'd sent in mm -hmm. and got you in on trial. And I think you played two, a couple of games. And I remember meeting Willie uh, in the small gym that we had at Aston Park, just outside yeah, the, the players' uh, changing room. And uh, I was just, I'd meet with Willie a couple of times a week and we'd have a workout. And Willie said, I need some help. He said, uh, the, the chairman was a guy called Alf Duffield who, who worked very hard for the club. Mm -hmm. He said, we've got to take this guy. We've got to get Bernie Slaven into our football club. But I've spoken to the chairman and there's no money. I said, well, the chairman's away. He said, so what, what are you saying? I said, well, chairman's away. And if the chairman's <laughs> away, uh, he can't make a decision, can he? So let's make the decision between ourselves. And if you're so sure, let's, uh, let's do everything we can to get Bernie to the club. And we ended up, I think the fee was uh, 35 grand. But we still pay it. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of bottles of scotch for your ex-chairman. <laughs> yeah, you like to drink. So that was the story, that's the way it went. So you took full responsibility. Well, I, Along with Wally to... Yeah, I think, uh, I think Al Alf was having difficulties in his own business and he had, he had some, a lot of financial pressure on him. Mm -hmm. So I think Willie got the brunt of it. He wasn't very happy when he found out and uh, Willie got the brunt of it. And then he gave me a bit of a dressing down as well. Uh, but I think uh, once he saw you play, he, he, he was quite happy with the decision and knew it was the right decision. After my first season, did you think, no, you spent 25 grand, did you think, well, that's another 25 grand down the Swanee? I think I felt like every <laughs> season. <laughs> no, I think, I think we all knew that, that even in that first season that it was going to take time for you to adjust to being mm -hmm. a full-time professional footballer. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody who came thought, wow, that, that, that lad looks like he, he can play. And I think once we got the first season, it was a very difficult season for everyone. Um, but I remember speaking to Bruce Reock and, and Bruce thought that providing he could get some discipline into you and teach you the offside rule, you'd be okay. They never taught me that. <laughs> Both of us have come through the, the working class background. Did that help you succeed? You know, as a businessman, it helped me as a footballer. Did it help you? You know, coming from that background? Yeah, I think, I think uh, definitely made me tougher. I think uh, um, I didn't know what I wanted to be in life. And uh, it gives you a... You know, the university of, of, of life really being mm -hmm. brought up in, in that work, working class background but m I, I, I was brought up in Pallister Park and Park End and enjoyed every minute of it. I can't remember ever wanting for anything, I can't remember uh, any, any hardship and all I remember is playing football uh, in the winter and cricket in the summer and, and enjoying life at school. When I arrived uh, I thought I'd made the big time. But the first season, obviously, you got relegated, liquidation, no money. Can you believe the turnaround in 20 years? And obviously, you played a major part in that. Can you believe the turnaround? Yeah, I can, because, uh, as you said, I, I was a part of that and, and, and enjoyed being a part of it. I think when I first got involved in the club, I was absolutely shocked with how, how damaged it was mm -hmm. uh, as a football club and as a business. And Dayson Park was falling apart, players weren't getting paid wages. We had no, no scouting system, no youth system, and uh, we were very, very fortunate to wake up and find that we had players in our ranks uh, of the quality of yourself and uh, you know, Stuart Ripley, Tony Mowbray, Gary Pallister, yeah. Gary Parkinson, Colin Cooper, Gary Hamilton. Uh, Archie Stevens was fantastic yeah, for he us. He was, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And we had the, the, these players, and Willie had Madrin had played a major part in that and, 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 and the development of them players. Unfortunately, uh, time ran out for Willie in terms of uh, Alf Duffield coming in, having to change around very quickly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that Bruce did a great job for us, but I think that the seeds were sown during the time of Willie Madrin stayed at our football club. How close was the club getting out of business? We were out of business. The club we were was, out of business. Yeah, there was, there was nothing to be saved. And we couldn't, the, the, the bookkeeping was atrocious, there was, there was books missing and when I first got involved I thought the debt was about 1.3 million and the week after it was 1.5, then mm -hmm. it was 2 and it was constantly increasing. There was no way this football club could be saved uh, in, 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 
in his present in that state at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I was uh, uh, lucky enough to work with some very good people. Uh, Colin Henderson came in and eventually became chairman. Middlesbrough Council got involved. Reg Corbridge and Graham Fordy from Scottish in Newcastle, mm -hmm. and an individual from London called Henry Moscovich. And between us, mm -hmm. we were able to uh, uh, to save the club. And I think that um, them two years. Uh, uh, from 86 onwards, perhaps them two years were the golden years in a strange kind of way. It was unexpected, it was unplanned, but to watch these youngsters come together and mould as a football team, uh, it was fantastic. And, and, and Bruce uh, had, had, had an authority and a power uh, to mould them together and to, and to get them to believe in themselves, to get you to believe in yourself. I mean, a lot of great kids coming through at the present yeah, crop, a lot of great kids then. You take great pride in that. It's the best part you of football. You take more pride in that. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, you, it's a different attitude from the players. I, I don't want to knock the lads that we've brought in, particularly mm -hmm. the foreign lads. But let's be honest, they've come here for, they've come here to play football, but they've come here because the big pound signs are there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would expect... In, in, in any business that if you have a talent you, you want rewarding for that but when it's your own lads from your own town they just seem to walk a little bit taller and their heart beats a little bit faster when they put on the red shirt and we saw Lee Catamull when we lost to Villa how upset he was yeah. and, and we've got we, we're very proud of the lads that we've got coming through and they're the real future of this club. During my time at Middlesbrough is there any goals or games that stand out? I mean there must be one or two surely. Yeah, I think uh, I remember at Coventry in, in the Premier League when you got an hat trick, and That's it was a hell of a game. I think I think it finished four three. Four three, we won. I think that was uh, a hell of a game. I remember perhaps uh, playing Chelsea in in the playoffs, playoffs yeah. and uh, I think it was yourself and Gary Hamilton who got the two goals yeah. to take us through to Stamford Bridge two 0 Yeah, Trevor Senior it was. Was it Trevor Senior? Yeah, Trevor Senior. Yeah. And and even the Bradford game where uh, Bradford had beaten us twice that season mm -hmm. in the semi-finals. Uh, but that was your year, I think, that uh, uh, you scored some spectacular goals. And uh, th th there's many, you know, and now you've asked me, they all come flooding back. Newcastle, they need to, yeah, to beat us to go Newcastle, up. And yeah. you've got to, we've got to, to win to stay up mm -hmm. uh, on the back of the relegation from, from, from the first division. And uh, I think you got two that day. Two that day, Ian Bird got two. And Ian Bird got two. Yeah, so, so you've yeah. got a good memory. I thought yeah. your memory had gone. <laughs> You went to see, we went to see Bruce Rierke in Denmark recently and it was very influential in my career. Obviously, Bruce, was, he departed before Wembley. Yeah, before we made our first Wembley appearance. How, how tough a decision was that? It was the right decision at the right time. And Bruce was fantastic for our football club. Mm -hmm. But um, his influence had begun to wane and we needed... Uh, we needed to change things. I think you can perhaps tell me more than I can tell you mm -hmm. on the reasons why Bruce's yeah. influence was on the wane. But he was a great guy. He was totally committed to our football club. He, he, he's a huge part of the history of this football club. And uh, I enjoyed my time working with Bruce Rayock. I, I played a bit of football with him and, uh, <laughs> and I enjoyed that as well. It was interesting <laughs> to see him close up. And it, it, was, a, it, it was a great time. You've been in charge now of Middlesbrough Football Club for, for 10 years, Gibble. Has it all been plain sailing? Yeah, well, we have our ups and downs, but you mustn't get too high and you mustn't get too low. And uh, I think perhaps the most disappointing year was when we lost the three points mm -hmm. and, and got relegated because I think Brian Robson was on the verge of something very special. Um, we had Ravenelli, we had Emerson, we had Juninho. Um, it was a strange team. It was a disjointed team. But Brian knew that, mm -hmm. and I know the plans that he had in place for the following season. And economically, we were in a position to, 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 to make them plans real, and mm -hmm. I just think that he was very unfortunate. Uh, we were unfortunate in the, in, in the League Cup final, and we were unfortunate to lose the three points the way that we did. We were unfortunate to be relegated. And that was, we ended up losing Janino at his peak, mm -hmm. and he, he was never the same player after the injury he suffered no. in Spain. Uh, I think we could have kept Emerson if the circumstances had have been better and I think we would definitely have kept Ravenelli if the circumstances had uh, been better. Whether I wanted to have kept Ravenelli is a different no, matter. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, 
Uh, after retirement, I remember meeting you. We went to Cyprus. There was a group of lads went to Cyprus, and I re I'll never forget it. I seen you wearing a two fifty Middlesbrough, a two fifty, a two pound fifty watch. You still wearing that? No. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that? <laughs> it lasted two hours fifty minutes. <laughs> I woke, I woke up and thought it was three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then when I did wake up, the game I suppose had been played in had finished. So I think it was what I used lot who would give me the watch. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've enjoyed the trips around Europe this season, last season. I remember joining, you joined the three leggings and one of the trip. Um, it's put, put butter on the map. How important has that been? I think it's been essential for us to yeah. continue the progress of the club. And... You know, we 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 now have a status uh, for being in Europe. It's really important that we progress well in Europe because it, it brings an awareness not just to the town. We're representing the country now. We're mm -hmm. the last British team in the UEFA Cup. We're through to the last eight. We, we, we think it is a golden opportunity to take the club forward again. And what a massive, massive uh, competition it could be for us this season. Uh, you granted me a testimonial game years ago. Not a lot of people turn up. Was that that bad? I was. Uh, I think I was more disappointed than you were, Bernie. Oh, seriously, yeah. And uh, I, I was at the game. I, I just couldn't understand it because uh, you give us great service uh, during your time here. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're a big part of our football club, and I. Everyone you speak to in the town as a, an affection and fondness for Bernie Slaven. Why they didn't turn up on that day, I, I just... Well, if you can't answer it, nobody can. Because they know how tight you are and how wealthy you are. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me people that you... Obviously, I do the tours phone in every night. I do the commentary with Alistair. Um, there ever been a time you've been listening, or maybe, maybe you don't listen, maybe you've listened all the time, you, you think, hey, get me his number. Yeah, there, there is. I, I think sometimes... You know, you, you, if, if you are a, a, a bricklayer, I wouldn't tell a bricklayer how to lay a brick, but if you're a welder, I, I couldn't weld. Right. And it amazes me sometimes that people think that they've thought about what they have to say and that you haven't or the club hasn't or the detail. And, and I hear things and I go, does that guy really believe that that's the way that this club operates? We're enormously professional. You know, we, we have sports scientists and we have doctors, we have cardiovascular guys, we have dietitians, we have sports psychologists. When are you going to send them around to me? And, <laughs> and, and we're quite good at what we do, but sometimes football isn't an onwards and upwards game. Sometimes you, 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 you have problems, you try to get to the root of that problem, and sometimes it corrects itself without you ever knowing really what the problem was. Mm -hmm. And I think that this season, I don't want to make excuses for injuries, but any team, if, if uh, Man United lose Wayne Rooney, if Arsenal lose uh, Terry Henry, you are less than you would be. And I think this year we went through a spell where we lost some big important players to us and, and, it, and it's affected our season. Fortunately, at this time, um, uh, the injuries are, are, are looking a lot better and, and we're a lot stronger because of it. I thoroughly enjoy doing my job on the radio and doing the commentary with Alistair. Do you still love it as chairman? Have you still got that passion and yeah, drive? Yeah, I, 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 I enjoy it. I enjoy it because uh, you get a camaraderie amongst the people, you know, Steve mm -hmm. McLaren. We've got some great people here. I enjoy working with Keith Lamb, uh, Steve McLaren, people like yourself. Mm -hmm. we, we have a great staff here. And uh, it's important that no matter the results, we try to keep level-headed, that we try to look in the long term that we're making right decisions and I look I come in and I see Dave Parnaby running the the academy and it's you really think job, yeah. you know after a bad result just come in and watch the kids and that that soon improves your temperament and your, your outlook. Finally we've played a few uh, charity games over the years both is you're not still playing are you? I'm still playing with you occasionally, Bernie. When I say play with you, I think that actually I do all the run and give the ball to you and never see it ever, ever again. I don't see it changing in the future. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, Cheers.